Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are wrapping up all of our February reads or my February reads. I also have two DNFs at the end of this video. First, we have This Woven Kingdom by Tara Mafi. This is based on Persian mythology and it's about a young woman named Eliza. She has a very mysterious past and a mysterious prophetic future. And in the present day, she is a servant in this fantasy world. Eliza is also a race called Jinn, J-I-N-N, -N, and they are kind of magical beings who hold power and magic, but at the time in this kingdom, they are not allowed to use their magic so that they're on equal footing with humans, which, you know. We also have Cameron, who is the prince of this city, and he's our love interest. He's our second point of view in this story. So the story itself is about Eliza. I don't know if it's about her learning things about herself or us learning things about her life and her potential, but it's also about these two characters meeting and, you know, having a connection. And a lot happens at the very end of this book. And it was just like, wow. I did vlog this video, which has gotten over like 250 views or something crazy like that. Um, if you do watch the vlog, just saying skip to the chapter of the final thoughts because I kind of just ramble on endlessly, which I do in most of my videos, but I did give this four stars. Um, for some reason, I was feeling like the pace was slow when I went and rewatched my vlog. I thought the pacing was slow and maybe the first 60% of this, but honestly, looking back now from reading that, that was such a strong Book. This is YA fantasy and there's a lot of YA fantasy that doesn't really have a direction. It doesn't have a clear path um, and this one was very well written. Everyone made decisions that made sense. Um, so yeah, I really like this book and I cannot wait for the others because this is already known to be a trilogy and yeah, can't wait. Next I read From Lukov With Love. I think it's by Mariana Zapata. Um, this is a romance that's on Kindle Unlimited, and I think it's independently published. It's about a young woman named Jasmine, and she has been figure skating for practically her whole life, but she's never had her big like moment, which she feels guilty for because her mother has like put her life on the line. Life on the line? Pretty much she's like bent over leg in, what? She's bent over backwards to get her to, you know, see her dreams through. At the same time, we have Ivan Lukov, who is the love interest. His parents own the skating rink that um, Jasmine skates at, and she's also known him since they were kids. His little sister is Jasmine's best friend growing up. They decide to partner together for couple skating, and it's about them learning to trust each other and falling in love. The love story in this was very cute um, because it is haters to lovers, so they dislike each other for whatever reason. You'll have to read the book to find out. It was funny listening to that banter and, you know, very much the hating game, but also learning to trust each other in so many different ways. I thought it was a very good use of figure skating because you have to physically trust your partner and that um, created a bridge for them to be able to trust each other. I only gave this three stars, although the romance was top notch. There were some moments that did feel contrived. Is that the word I'm looking for? It just felt a little, I don't know. I felt like there was just something missing in this. Um, if you've read this, a lot of people have. Uh, comment me down below your thoughts about this book. I'm still kind of trying to like comb through what exactly was missing in my head. Next, I read Punk Love by LJ Shen. This is a novella based on true events. And it's all about our main character, Laura, and the relationship she had with a young man named Alex. It's about Laura's life through the lens of this relationship. We actually do span years in this novella, which I wasn't expecting. The part of the two young people meeting and falling in love was, it was fine. It was cringy, mostly because it just reminded me of how immature I used to be and how cringy it is to read about other people being very immature. However, where this book really shines is that Laura is speaking from a time in the future and she's looking back at all of this in her life and we see that she has grown, or at least I'm hoping that she has grown. The way that this is written as kind of a journal entry or as kind of a uh, an explanation to another person, I really liked that construct. It, it just hit well it just it it was great but if you enjoy romance i think this is worth a listen it was 
short. It's a novella. So yeah. Next was Such a Pretty Smile by Christy Demeester. I, wow. This one I had on holds with my library and I was like, let's check it out. It's a horror novel, which I don't read too much of. And I've got to say, this was one of the scariest books I've ever read. If you watch the vlog, I'm actually physically scared. Like that doesn't happen usually. Like I had to like... <laughs> This book is about Lila, who I think is 13 years old, and her mother, Caroline. There are two points of view, Caroline and Lila, but also two different, uh, what is it called? Time? What is that word I'm trying to think of? There are two different timelines. Thank you. I'm saying thank you like you answered me. Thank you. There are murders happening in the present day, which is when Lila is 13 years old. Young girls are being mur murdered violently. And also warning to anyone who doesn't like graphic content, this is pretty violent. Just the descriptions of people and some of the, uh, yeah. But then when we are in Caroline's uh, timeline, there's also murders happening then. And we find out that there's mur murders that have happened in the past as well. So um, it is the mystery of what this is and who is doing it. And yeah, all the men sucked in this book. Every single man. Oof. I gave this four stars just because it really did capture me. I read it in two sittings. I wish I had read it in one sitting though because I was so creeped out. The spooky vibes were really there. So if you if you like spooky stories or if you're participating in some sort of like summer ween, definitely get this one if you want to get scared. But also it was kind of like a feminist story. So there are lots of layers to this and it was freaky. <laughs> Next, I read The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. Oh. This is a Korean folktale retelling and it's about a young girl named Mina who sacrifices herself to the sea god in place of her brother's girlfriend. She goes down to the bottom of the ocean and she is in this spirit realm and she has to figure out how to stop this curse. And she also meets some friends, she meets a love interest, she meets a lot of people. If you want to know more about this, I just did a reading vlog on it, um, which I'll link up here. I really liked the prose and the word choices and also the fairy tale kind of way this is written. So much love for that. And also the themes of fate and destiny and family. I really, really, really like that. However, the story and the plot and, you know, the forcedness of the relationships, which though the relationships were very rich in feeling, like I really felt it. However, they were very rushed and I wish this book would have been longer so that we could have really had more depth to everything and had more time to develop these relationships. And also there were times where the quest that Mina had just really felt like she was meandering and I think that was partially part of the story but also I felt like the plot was a little muddy. I gave this three stars which does kind of hurt a little bit because there's so much of this I really do like, but at the end of the day, the story itself was a little wobbly. I am very much excited to read more of Axie O's books. I know she had a young adult XOXO, I think is what it is, and definitely anything that they publish in the future. And then finally, I read Summer Suns. This is by Lee Mandelo. I read the first half in a vlog, and though I really liked the atmosphere in the first half and Damn, this has some of the best. I don't know how to describe it. It is spooky, not as scary as Such a Pretty Smile, but it is very atmospheric. I like the characters that they were introducing. I like the language. There are a lot of words in here that I had no idea what they were, and I felt those academia vibes just from reading this. But it did feel like the pacing was really slow in the first half because our main character... Oh, why don't I tell you what this is about? <laughs> God damn. This is about a young man named Andrew. He's been best friends with his best friend named Eddie for, you know, since childhood and they're bonded in ways that I can't get into. They are super, 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 super close. They are foster brothers, but also more question mark. Before this book starts, Eddie has already gone to Vanderbilt for his graduate program. And in the six months that he was there, he killed himself. Andrew obviously is filled with grief, but he also doesn't believe that Eddie would do this. Andrew goes to Vanderbilt, which he was already planning on doing, but he goes there to investigate Eddie's death, in which he meets a slew of people, very close to my heart now, his roommate Riley, a boy named Sam, who's Riley's cousin, 
as well as, you know, academic professors, classmates, yada, yada, yada. The second half I read yesterday, oh my God. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. The reason I didn't like the first half as much as the second half was also because Andrew was having suspicions about a few characters, no spoilers, obviously, um, that were so obviously not the culprits and they were so obviously, you know, wanting to, to be in Andrew's life, blah, blah, blah. And so the second half, we're really getting down to business. We're investigating the people that need to be investigated, the suspicious persons, but also Andrew now has friends and his found family. And yes, there are so many parts in this that were so great. The writing style, the atmosphere building, the mystery itself um, got even better in the second half. Um, this is also sort of paranormal. There's horror in it. And guys, I have to tell you, some of the best sexual tension I've ever read in this book, it could light a city. Everyone has sexual tension with each other. It's just, wow. A lot of people are saying that this is like the Raven Boys and I really do have to agree. First of all, there's a group of guys. Um, we are missing Blue though, the female representation, which was really lacking in this book, by the way. Most of the females that were introduced in the story, most of them some of them not even named were just sexual objects, uh, which was a little uncomfy. But yes, it was very much like the Raven Boys. They do <laughs> car racing, which I actually don't really care that much about. But after the first couple times it happens, it's not really a huge focus. But we also have, um, you know, the the brotherhood and fighting a mystery together. And, and ugh, I just love this book. I gave this one a four and a half stars. Um, it's not a five because of the pacing in the first half and also the questionable female representation. I don't need like every book to have stellar female characters because a lot of the books I have are flooded with stellar female characters and sometimes there's not great male representation. But at least in almost every book I read, there are at least two male characters in a room together and the same cannot be said for this book for females. Despite that, there was other great representation. There was queer representation, there were trans representation, and also um, kind of maybe just one or two sentences about the systemic racism in academia, especially in the South. Moving on to DNFs, we have Throne of Glass um, by Sarah J. Mass. I'm sure everyone has read this. It's a YA fantasy about a young woman who's in prison for being an assassin, and she has a chance to be freed by participating in the king's competition. I DNF'd a little over halfway just because I didn't find myself caring too much First about the mystery, um, second about the kind of love triangle situation that seemed to be happening. However, I had heard from a couple people that it really does get better throughout the series. So I think I'm gonna give this another shot. I have the holdout on my library. So I think I'm gonna try to revisit this one. Second, so sad to say, but Float by Kate Marchant. This was a book that was released um, in February and I was so excited because the, first of all, it's very cute cover. Um, and second of all, oh, it's not on here, but it's on Goodreads. It said as a blurb for fans of Sarah Dessen, which I absolutely adore Sarah Dessen. This was not it. I DNF'd on page 82. It is like Sarah Dessen in the setup. It's about a young girl who has lived in Alaska and her parents are in this shitty divorce. So she goes to Florida to stay with her aunt in this beach town. Beach town, summer. That's very Sarah Dessen. I think I set myself up for getting my hopes a little too high um, and I shouldn't have been thinking about it in comparison to Sarah Dessen because honestly that made it way more apparent to me that I did not like this book. In comparison to Sarah Dessen, the characters, first of all, did not match up. They were very immature. They were very questionable, not just as an immature kind of young adult way, but also they made decisions and actions that made no sense, like none at all. And sadly, the writing itself, no. In comparison to Sarah Dessen. Sarah Dessen, oh, I could, I could sing songs about Sarah Dessen. Oh, look, all of her little books are lined up on my shelf right here. Her writing, the prose, the, the way she builds a story, the way she, that she waves in between time to build this character, not this character, but all these characters, is unparalleled in the YA genre. I'm just saying. And this had none of that grace and beauty and build. And I think I also psych myself out because I see that it is published by Wattpad Books, which means is this a fan fiction? It really felt like 
actual Sarah Dessen fan fiction. If you want a similar vibe where a character goes to a beach town to stay for a summer and she kind of has to learn in this book, she has to learn how to swim. I would suggest Along for the Ride, which is pretty much the exact same thing. Um, but better. And they're coming out with a Netflix, I think, movie on this in April. So if this sounded good, read this instead. Along for the ride, Sarah does. Okay, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you've read any of these, please let me know your thoughts and opinions below. I will see you very soon for another video, and I hope you have a lovely day. Why do I always do that? I'm sorry. Bye.